Hey guys, Shane here. Welcome to this inbox review of Asuka Models 135th US Medium Tank M4A3 E8 Sherman or EZ8 with accessories. And this is obviously meant to be a kit that represents the tank used in the movie Fury or just simply it's the Fury tank. Um, this kit has basically been out in different, um, in different guises for a while. But this just comes with a few extra bits and pieces such as the log armor, the commander's 1919A4 30 caliber machine gun mount just in front of his cupola like they have in the film, and a few other items of stowage. So we'll have a look see and get what we get in the box. It's a quite um, a packed out kit and it should build into a wonderful model. So we'll have a look when we get in the box. So just have a look see before we start on bagging piece uh, parts and going through it. We get quite a bit of plastic. So this is a very um, packed kit, so there's plenty in this to keep you busy, as well as some goodies. So let's uh, have a proper look in and see what type of detail we get. So moving on to the instructions, uh, very similar to any other Tasca kit uh, you might see me review or anywhere else. Um, just kind of very much like a Tamiya kit. So, explode the black and white diagrams, booklet style, very, um, very clear. So we'll have a quick look through, I, I won't bore you too much going into the steps. So we have our track assembly, <clears throat> and we have, two, um, uh, we have two options. We have link to link tracks, and um, I know some of you really like functionality and workability in, in your kits. I personally don't, um, I, I think it adds an element of over complexity to a model, but also it's just um, that's just me. However, you know everyone's a bit different. So we have um, workable um, multi-part link-to-link tracks. These are the T80 style tracks. You believe I believe you need 94 links per side. And then we also have a rubber band style, which are made out of a very soft and malleable um, um, kind of final rubber, which is not uh, which isn't bad at all. You have to put down the guide horns individually. However, that's not much of a problem. So then we have our idlers and drive sprockets, very normal stuff. Then we have our differential cover or final drive, our transmission cover assembly. Um, some of the best on the market are these ones, believe it or not. They, uh, they go together very well and normally there's a seamless gap between that and the glazes plate, which is always good. Then we move on to our... Um, lower hull tub and sponsons which as you can see is a multiple plate design very much so how the real vehicle would have been built um, if you do notice uh, I need something to point with if you do notice everything is numbered so as long as you follow the sequence of each number in order um, everything should align just fine then we start adding some of the stuff for the deflector and exhaust assemblies as well as the, um, the the mounts and tension mounts for the idlers. <clears throat> we also have our engine deflector and engine axis hatch panels, as well as a tow hitch. We have, for some reason, two big steps to fill up all this for jury cans. Bit of a waste, in my opinion, but fair enough. Also, it does have us drilling holes. Um, this is probably for mounting the uh, deflectors, so do, in, um, do ensure that you go through each step and make sure you don't miss anything until it's too late. Step 3 is our HVSS suspension which is workable, again I don't care much for that, however it's nice that it's there. Um, what's it? So it seems to be about a dozen parts per bogey and then we have 6 bogeys, 3 per side. Um, I would recommend you leave these bogies off until after you painted the model. It will just make life. It will just make life so much more easier for you that way. Um, trying to paint around these, even with an airbrush, is very tricky. Step six: We're mounting the um, return rollers and mounting points for those. Now we're beginning to move up to the. Um, upper hull assembly, so we're beginning to put the ball mount for the 1919A4 machine gun. We're putting the um, hull air blower or ventilation system in between the two um, the guys in the front of the tank, the driver and co-driver. 
we're putting down our um, ha uh, engine hatch limiters which basically stops it from slamming against the hull as well as our lifting rings also uh, we're putting in our manual fire extinguisher um, box which is basically like uh, the engine was pre-wired with a fire extinguisher so if anything went wrong during maintenance or whatever if a crewman was standing near you could pull it and basically uh, put out any fire in the engine compartment. I imagine in combat in situations you ain't going to be alive long enough to pull that so cause you're too busy hopping out of the tank. Next step we are mounting our 1919 machine gun as well as joining the upper and lower hull tub and um, upper hull to the transmission cover. Moving on to our uh, driver and co-driver hatches we have um, internal periscope detail these do come in both solid plastic and clear plastic which is good uh, we have the armored covers and photo etch uh, brush guards which can be a bit delicate and a bit annoying to get right but they are a nice detail um, a sad thing to note is that the periscope mounts themselves are molded in so you can't model them t twisting or turning like you would in the real vehicle bit of a shame um, the, the dragon kits have that this one unfortunately does not also, it gives us the measurements for 0 0.3 uh, millimeter brass wire for making our own um, handles, which aren't included for some reason, which I, I God only knows. I think there are plastic ones, but they're not listed. So we'll have a look for that in the box when we come to it. Next step, we have our fender detail, as well as we're adding our headlights, our horn, gun travel locks, <clears throat> the watertight um, canvas mount for the 1919 ball mount, as well as the brush guards for the headlights, as well as their um, retaining plugs. So we have our little, these little plugs here mount onto the side of the bracket like shown. And what these were, were if you remove the headlights in combat, you were meant to put those plugs in their mounts to stop any water or debris getting into the vehicle. Fun fact. <laughs> Uh, rear deck assembly, we're putting down like our, our, our tool shelf, if you will. Engine hatches and mounting said engine hatches as well as a telephone box and a few other bits and pieces. We also, which is a nice um, detail, which some of you may not be aware of. So this is the lower sponson. And we mount this piece here, which is, you can see uh, here, which is, this is the generator exhaust pipe for the little Joe auxiliary generator um, so that's a very nice detail I don't think that was included in the Tamiya kits uh, I may be wrong there I've yet to get my hands on one um, I built one a very long time ago and I can't quite remember so I'll have a look when we get uh, one of the Tamiya A4s or A3s should I say next, uh, next page of goodness so we are mounting our tools and we have a top-down plane view of the alignment for those set tools, which is good because the, um, these instructions seem a lot more clear than the Fireflies one, so we should be any problems here. We also have the fuel caps going in, anything else. It also gives us like a, a painting guide for painting the tools, <clears throat> which basically says um, often the tools are as painted as olive drab. And if anyone has seen like Michael's or Hamilcar's um, heresy video regarding tools, you'll know that in German vehicles this seems to be the case as well. However, um, I think it's uh, one of those details a lot of us ignore on purpose just to add a bit of visual interest to our models, which I don't have any problem with. Uh, now we're mounting our final drive and our idler and bogies. I would actually leave all these off until after the model's painted, paint these separately and then mount them in place. Uh, just to make life a little bit easier. Still focusing on the lower hull, or should I say the upper hull. So now we're putting in our um, our side skirts, which are very um, particular to the late version Fifi SS style Shermans. We have our first aid box, and then we have a plain few, so we know where to place our, or should I say, um, a detailed shot, sorry if you guys could see, of where to place our spare track links and the first aid box on the side of the hull. 
Now we're moving on to the, again to the back deck of the vehicle. Now we're placing in both our um, our deflectors. And the deflector seems quite accurate actually. A lot of times these deflectors are not um, that accurate on, on Sherman tanks. Um, they do seem to be a little bit different to the uh, Fifi or yeah, um, the Fifi SS style suspension um, ones. I need to double check that because I know there's some differences in in deflector design. However, a very nice detail, and I have to admit, I'm very impressed with it, is the actual stowage um, rack. This whole assembly here, which can be modelled, folded, or in the deployed position. Very, very cool, um, and very, very reminiscent to the real machine. So they did a good job there. Um, if you're doing Fury, um, you want to have it deployed and have a full of stowage. I have a resin aftermarket in my spares, which is molded with a load of stowage, which I'll use for Fury. Just uh, kind of be as kind of accurate to the movie one as possible, because that's what I'm going for. Okay, now we're moving up into the turret assembly. So step 16 has us doing the gun. We have two types of gun barrel, uh, both two halves. It's a bit of a shame, however, not a big deal. Basic modeling skills can recover that in seconds, well minutes should I say, without being too optimistic. The two part muzzle brake can be a little bit of a deal breaker for many guys. So they go looking for um, turned brass or turned aluminium um, muzzle brakes and barrels. However, all my research, I cannot find any. I can find the long 76mm gun in, in aluminium, but they have you cut off or use the kit part muzzle brakes which defeats the purpose however fair enough very easy to recover these type of um, intricately shaped um, gun brakes well these would have been cast in, that, um, in real life anyway due to their kind of rounded design you can tell by the look of them so if you take Mr. Surfacer or tin down um, Tamiya putty or Filejo putty and just stipple it onto the entire brake you will hide that seam after a coat or two and you'll also give extra detail. We also have the option for a brake or without the brake, whatever you want to go for. We have the waterproofing blast bag that goes around the vehicle, which is molded in plastic. There will be a little bit of seam work that has to be done. And then we have the version without the um, without the canvas. So that's up to you. Then we have like the measurement for the exposed piece of steel, the gun barrel, which would have been where the weapon would have recoiled back into itself and was left bare. Not always, but you do see them in certain photographs. Now we're moving up into the cruise, um, the Commander uh, Capilla. This again comes in both hard plastic and clear plastic, depending on what you're looking for. Um, again, the um, the hatch is molded with its periscope permanently molded down, which might be a deal breaker for some people, but uh, we'll survive. Then we go to our loader's hatch, we have detail on both sides, which is good. We have the travel, the travel lock, pen, or the pintel for the um, HMG travel lock on the back of the turret, as well as the internal detail for the pistol port. Moving to the turret proper, we have the upper and lower sides being mounted in. Make sure you put your periscope detail in first or you won't be able to get it in easily. Um, you will have a seam from where the bottom of the bustle meets. However, put some cast texture detail with a bit of uh, tin down putty and I'll hide that very easily. Mounting the gun mantlet, um, or should I say the, the, the mounting bracket for the mantlet, um, the details for the brush guards for the uh, gunner and loader's periscope. Again, a little bit detail photo, or a little bit of delicate photo etch work there, but should be fine and then smaller details going in on the turret roof. Then we move on to a pretty impressive um, assembly, which is the um, M2 um, H HP, isn't it? Um, heavy machine gun, or whatever the hell it's called. Basically the Browning 50 caliber, or as it's known in the Irish Army, the .5. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a, a nice little assembly. We have options of barrels, with or without carry a handle. Um, the loading tray can be up or down, uh, obviously our butterfly mount style triggers and uh, grips. Very nice actually, it's probably one of the nicest uh, 0.5s in plastic. Then we have ammunition boxes, mounting of the brackets, or the cradle should I say. How you mount the ammunition box in. 
or conversely how to mount it on the travel lock on the rear of the third which is a very nice little assembly. I haven't seen many pictures done like that but it's a little cool that it's there. And now we got like a, a little belt of ammunition which I won't use because it doesn't look realistic. And then we move on to the last step which is the the mounting for said bracket for this is like the travel lock assembly for the 50 caliber machine gun as you can see here mounting the mud flaps and the 0.5 machine gun and then it's just basically tears in the hull and you're good to go we also have another smaller pamphlet which is our accessories and stowage which I believe and looking at the sprues confirms my suspicions these are actually from the Tamiya um, stowage, allied stowage set so we get a few jerry cans the German and the um, American version we get a, an oil drum a few new set bags and bed rolls and what have you and a small amount of um, the little buckets and wash hat basins and shit like that uh, it's nice. It's it's good to have. I probably won't use these on Fury. I'll use them on the um, on the high speed tractor instead. I think they'll suit it better. Then we have some of the old tank blocks. They want you to use the the, the wood plastic wooden logs from this to make the log armor. Uh, to be honest with you, you're probably better off actually just taking some small twigs and wiring them together, and you actually have a real real log armor panel. And on the back side of this, we have our deckel sheet, a single paper. Uh, K ration box or C ration box, wherever it is, and we have a small lead foil sheet that I'll show you in a few minutes, which is designed for waterproofing, like if you want to do like a tarp or something. Our simple crew commander that's um, included in the kit, very basic but not a bad little model, good to practice on actually. These, these type of crew commanders are very good for beginner painters because there's not a lot going on and it's just good to learn your technique off. Then we have the 1919A4 30 caliber medium machine gun and it gives us how to make it in such a configuration that it can sit in front of the crew commander's cupola uh, just like in the film so obviously like this making it look more and more like fury and then we have the old style pintle mount that we won't be using if we're building a uh, set tank um, but still good to have it and then we have if we want to do like the infantry version with the tripod which is very nice so again you normally get a few of these types of sprues in most Tasca kits or Asuka kits so uh, hang on to these you can never have too many 1919s so moving on to some of the smaller um, parts before we get to the the main kit components so we have our deckel sheet with our standard US stars and other serial markings um, I haven't used any Asuka decals yet um, so it'll be interesting to see how these um, how these behave. I'm sure they should be fine. And then on the back we have our small photo etch fret that has our brush guards and the brush guards for our headlights, amongst a few other small details. Then we have a bag of clear parts, which is our cupola and a few uh, periscopes and lenses. We also get a solid plastic or um, a solid plastic cupola ring if you want to use that instead which is actually on this side. <laughs> so, uh, a little bit hard to see that for some reason, a bit dark. But there you go, so you have the same things, the lenses and the periscopes in solid or clear plastic. Always uh, a nice option. We get a little bag of poly caps because, you know, if you want to play with your toy. Um, then we have this little bag with twine, which is good for like um, securing stowage and stuff like that, and also for the log armor. And we have a two um, a kind of thick cards, actually a little bit too thick, I think. think. But we have a card C and K ration box. And then we have this little piece of aluminium foil for making tarps or waterproofing uh, for, like, say, machine guns or fence or whatever. And then we have a single um, decal or a decal sheet for our, um, our stowage, which you can clearly see it's Tamiya. So obviously this must be a little bit, but there's obviously partnership between the two of them. So moving on to our lower hull assembly. So as you can see, there are of individual plate design. Our lower hull is in fact detailed. We have our main panels and escape hatches and what have you. Our firewall detail. And the other um, hull side. 
Again, this is a, a totally stepped and numbered build, so this shouldn't cause you any issues and it should align perfectly for you. Also, you can see the two-part uh, two muzzle brake. It looks pretty good, it's not, uh, it's not the worst in the world. It'd be interesting to see how well we can hide that seam, and that's the, the other side of it there. Moving on to the um, upper hole. So we have some very nice um, weld beads and what have you, very, very clear ones. We do have some foundry markings, again a little hard to see, you can kind of see the light is uh, the light is picking it up. It helps if the light isn't in the fucking way of the camera. There you go. So you can kind of see the foundry mark in there, the hexagon C, and the cast numbers. And uh, not much of a cast. Uh, this this entire assembly here was cast, so there should be a cast um, a cast texture there. So if you do want to detail your your shermy, you might want to add a cast detail to here. Also. The splash guard for the turret ring was also cast in three parts, which really isn't included in this. It's not really depicted, it's just a single piece. So there's one piece here and then another one here. So it should be two um, weld lines and then a cast texture on this as well. Not really included, and it should also be drainage. There should also be drainage ports in this too, but you can add that yourself. Uh, then we go to our fuel filling caps. Again, these were cast as well. And also should be a small drainage hole in these as well. However, I just tend to drill them in myself and auto include it that way. Um, we then we have the armor bracket for the uh, fire extinguisher box that uh, goes into that area there. Detail on the front um, glazes plates, pretty simple. A little bit of flashing here, as you can see, and you can see a little couple of divots. These aren't sink marks. It's just um, an illusion that's been created because on the back of the hull there is some locator pin marks or sorry uh, drill marks so it gives a, a kind of like a false uh, a false reading as it were then we have our our um, our sponsons a tiny amount of detail a few access plugs here and there and that's really it and the same on this side again an access plug and that's about it so then we get three of these screws, which is our wheels and suspension bogey. So I'll just have to take a look at one. Again, detail is very nice. Some very fine detail on these. The uh, HVSS suspension is pretty nicely rendered. As are the road wheels. And we have um, both detail on both sides, which is nice. I'm not seeing any flashing either. Sometimes some of the smaller parts on Asuka models can flash. And then we have the mounting brackets for the bogies. Again, some nice bolt detail there. That could take a wash or a pin wash very nicely. Then we move on to the sprue that has many of our engine and other recognizable details. So we have our rear engine plate here. Again, kind of very simple. You can see a little bit of flashing on the corner there which does seem to be always kind of the case with a lot of Zuka models. It can be a bit spongy at times, if I'm honest, which I always should be, and I am. So there we have our telephone box, our first aid box, the reinforced hinges for the modified um, engine axis hatches that were modified later in the war, or could even be post-war. Uh, we have our engine um, deck, if you will, as well as our big grills. Then we have our travel lock, our deflector grills. And then we move down to some of the third details. Very noticeably, the canvas detail for the blast bag around the mantlet. A mantlet as well seems to have a nice cast texture, as well as cast numbering, which you can kind of see there beside one of the sight ports. You can kind of make that out there. So very nice. So we move on to another sprue. Um, so this one has a, a general kind of hull details. So we have our very delicate um, 
Side skirt mounting rails are often in photo etch and other scale models. Um, this is in plastic. I can keep this for my spare box if I want to add this to another build which I have in mind in the future because I am working my, my way through the Shermans. Um, now this will not be used on the kit. This is more for the earlier type of M4 uh, family but still great to have. We have the bolt, um, basically the, the bolting bracket for the transmission cover when it mounts into the hull. Again, some very nice crisp detail there. The gun cleaning rods. We have an open style um, travel lock for our main gun, as well as the tow hitch arm here. Some spare track links, as well as the rear storage shelf for the back of the the engine deck and our tools kind of for a sim kind of normal stuff here there are the mounting brackets for the idlers this kind of boxy messy assembly here is actually the brush guard for the the horn you can always tell it by the little cross detail up here driver and co-driver hatches and the old split style turret pull out that we won't be using in this kit Basic detail on the inner faces of the hatches, but sink marks. So keep that in mind. Uh, you may have to clean that up if you want the hatches open. Then we move on to some sort of smaller sprue, which is mostly our differential or transmission cover. So we have the corners over here, the actual transmission cover itself. We have a very fine cast texture. I will probably add more to this. It's a little bit too light. Then we have the mounting bolts um, for the a lower hull, as well as what appears to be a chair for either the loader or the gunner, as well as our P48, um, no, or P46, I think, uh, ra um, radio antenna mount. That's actually quite fine detail, I have to give them that. Our lifting ring details, pretty nice. Then we have our two, um, our two pair of gun assemblies for our 76mm main armament. So we have a version with the muzzle brake and one without. A little bit flashy, quite a bit noticeable there on this piece here. So again, a little bit of care will be needed cleaning that. Then we have some of the details of the travel lock on the rear of the um, turret, which is, this is where the pintle mount for the travel lock is, and then that's the, the barrel lock. Then we have our pistol port. Often, late in the war, pistol ports were welded shut and then filled in with flux. However, we're doing fury, uh, do not do this, so don't fill it in with putty, keep it, uh, keep it open if you will, or functionable, because in the film, um, the crew have theirs in a working order, if you want to be accurate to what you see in the movie. We have the mantlet without the, um, the canvas um, blast bags, and again, a pretty nice cast texture, um, you might want to add more to that if you wish, however, I'm not seeing any cast numbering, which is a bit bizarre, that's on one and not the other. Some other very fine plastic detail here. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I think that's actually. Oh no, these are the um, reinforcing rods for the um, the side skirts. Moving on to O sprue. So we have our big cooling grills for our um, engine deck, as well as another engine uh, deck assembly. I'm not sure which one we're using here. Our fuel caps, some very small pull handles. Quite delicate, so um, be careful removing them from their sprue. Engine axis hatch and lower engine plate, if you will. This seems to be engine deck detail, as well as our deflectors and our exhaust shrouds. A lot of the parts have pin marks in the inner detail, so say if you wanted to have like the engine hatch open, uh, for whatever reason, maybe if you bought an aftermarket engine, uh, you're going to do a bit of filling work on that, unfortunately, but we'll survive. And this is G-Sprue, and this is some plastic details such as brush guards, headlights and spot lamps, as well as fueling, uh, fuel caps, tow hitches, plastic periscope, um, the Chrysler style engine cle um, track cleats that things like Firefly would have. Um, I don't, we won't be using it on, on, um, on Fury, it's a different type of track link, they have a T80 rather than that style. Um, we have a British style fire extinguisher as well as the track um, uh, spare track um, brackets for other types of Shermans. Most of the stuff on the sprue uh, we probably won't be using and we get two. 
we get another double sprue of our dry sprocket. We get two styles as well as our return roller and final drive. And then we have the, or sorry, the idler and control rollers. We have a massive piece of flash here, but literally I just popped the right off with, with minimum force. So yeah, it's grand. Again, detail is pretty nice and both sides. So I'm not seeing, I see a little bit of flash, but just a, more importantly, I haven't seen any sink marks, which are much more difficult to work with. So moving to the hull assembly, or sorry, should I say the turret assembly. So immediately you can see the cast and foundry mark. So you see again the, the hexacon C and the cast numbers, as well as another foundry mark. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Uh, that's a bit tricky. You can kind of see it there above the pistol port. Again, cast detail is not great, as in the cast texture, if I, should I say. So you might have to come in and add in your own just to augment that with a, a better effect. Again, Mr. Surfacer or any type of pin putty stippled on with a brush will do this job. Some periscope mounts. And then these are appear to be the mounting brackets for the gun ele elevation system and then the lower hull. Or should I, the, the lower turret, should I say. So then we have another small sprue, again with um, a large type loader's hatch. Our sand skirts, which are extend outside of the vehicle. Quite um, um, quite noticeable on the HVSS uh, systems because the tracks tend to be a bit wider. We have our plastic front fenders. Our idler mounts. That's really it there. So we're almost almost through most of the parts of this kit now. So here are two track mount, uh, two um, track options. So we get a very very light final style um, track assembly. I'm going to probably use this because I'm lazy, and I don't like link, uh, workable tracks. If, if these were just link to link, I wouldn't have any issue with them. But I hate workables. I just they're too fiddly for me, unfortunately. Um, I know a lot of you guys like them, and that's fine. But for me, I just I don't have the delicate enough touch for that. Now these tracks are basically, uh, you get four sections, two per uh, two per run. However, they super glue fine together and um, they have good detail. And you don't have to worry about sag on a HVSS suspension system because it's a, what's known as a live track. There is no suspension unless something's gone wrong with the track tension. So it's not like it doesn't happen, but it shouldn't. And then we have our many, many pieces for our workable suspension system that I like hell ain't using however you do have to use if you use the rubber band style or final ones you have to use the hollow square uh, guide teeth so that's grand uh, I'm going to save myself the agony and not touch them and then moving on to some of the last sprues so the last actual kit sprues are our commander detail is pretty okay um, again, very good beginner's piece, a little bit flashy, but um, well adequate for basic model needs and a great thing, a great learning uh, base to learn on if you want to practice figure painting. On the other side, we have our 1919 machine gun and tripod assemblies. Again, you've all seen 1919s before, no point taking them out. And then we have some jerry cans. Again, you've seen those before, no point. And then we have our ninth, or should I say, our HMG 0.550 cal. Again, you've seen these before; they're exactly the same in the other um, Asuka models. So if I review, then we get two uh, two sprues, or should I say, we get four sprues from Tamiya. So we get our the old tank barricade set. Now we'll be using is the plastic rods to make the log armor, and then we get some like um, hedgehogs. So again, they're going to get thrown into the bits box. I probably won't use these. I'll probably make my own. But if you want to do like a Normandy diorama, at least you got some tank blocks. And then we have this sprue, which we have two of. So we'll just pull up one. And we have our... Uh, we have our, our jerry cans. These are the American style. And then our big fuel drums. Our ammunition slash map cases. Our collapsible canvas water uh, buckets, I believe that's what they are. Our Muset bags, the end caps for the fuel drums, 
and I believe these are the German style jerry cans as well as a few bed rolls and we get two of those sprues so nice and simple stuff there and enough to kind of populate the model so there you have my inbox review of Asuka models 135th M4A3 EA Sherman or EZ8 with accessories um, in all this is one hell of a nice kit I am really looking forward to building this as I'm one of those strange people that actually likes the movie Fury so uh, I will be building mine up as Fury in the very near future I've got a few more projects to finish off before we get there and uh, hopefully it will be a very fun and enjoyable project and for anyone who's in the market for an Easy 8 I would strongly recommend this um, okay it's an involved build there's a lot going on with it but it shall give you a very nice and accurate um, model to go in your Sherman collection so thank you for watching guys stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one bye bye